In this video, I'm going back to the basics to show you my distress inks and my distress oxide inks and show you the difference between the two. Hi, my friends. Let's get started. These are my little distress ink spots. I started buying these when I first started crafting from Michaels. And then I found these wonderful tins that they fit in. But I also have the regular size of Distress Inks. I didn't buy all of the big ones. I mean, there's like three sets of 12, I, I believe. But I did buy a lot of Distress Oxide Inks when they first came out. Three years ago now? Three, four years ago. Anyway, so here's all my Distress Oxide Inks. And I Velcroed a little sponge to each one. So that's why they don't fit into a conventional. I had a long um, box, but they don't fit in there anymore because of this. But this works out great. You can see this one's used. I just used this. This is from scrapbook.com. Uh, the, the one set I got comes with two of these and then five of the sponges. But you can also buy the sponges separately, and that's what I did. And then I, I bought some Velcro, and that's how I do that. But anyway, I'm going to be showing you the difference. You can use Distress Inks for backgrounds which I do mostly, it's just backgrounds. And at the end of this video, I will be attaching to the end screen a video of how I made a background. But we can use these as watercolor, which until I got into watercoloring again, I, that's what I was using them for. So here I have two pieces of Strathmore watercolor paper and what you can do is use one of your acrylic ink blocks and apply it like that oops this is broken china regular distress ink And this is a water brush. Yeah, see? Just use it like regular watercolor. Now let me find my Broken China Distress Oxide. And here it is. Let me get the ink, the uh, regular ink off. Not that it's going to make a lot of difference. It's got a thicker, chalkier look to it. When it dries, it'll be more evident. So let's use another example. Distress oxides are water reactant. They are a pigment ink fusion, which uh, dye and pigment ink together. It's a beautiful blend. This is the latest one in my group of distress oxides that I got because it doesn't, I haven't put the Velcro on there. This is the, and I love this for making Christmas trees. It lo looks really, really nice. Okay, let's try another one. See, I don't I did not buy matching colors in either because I could do either or. So I might have 
like for instance the rustic wilderness i don't have rustic wilderness in distress inks but i thought i had peeled paint okay I do have ice spruce in both the Distress Ink and the Distress Oxide Ink. So let's try that. Let's wipe off our brush because it's full of blue. Okay. Just dab it, push and dab until it comes clear. All right. Here's the regular distress. This is ice spruce. A gray green color. I haven't used this in a long time. The distress oxide. Okay, I don't know if you can see. It's a little bit has a kind of a shine to it, also on on the blue, the broken china, kind of a more chalky color as opposed to this distress ink. Okay, now let's do a background. And again, we're going to be using the Strathmore watercolor paper and my scrapbook.com tool. My favorite has been the blues and the greens. So this one's really close and I try to I do three okay feathers broken china oops Let's use the ice spruce because I have all three of those. Let's see. Peacock feathers, broken china, and ice spruce. Okay. So we have a good comparison here. All right. So let's find this one. We have the, let's do the ice spruce first. This is Distress Ink. I haven't used it for a while, so it's a little dry. Take this off and put it back on here. Peacock feathers. Wipe that off a little bit. And now broken china.
brush it off a little bit before we go into the oxide. Okay. There we go. We're going to have them meet. Okay, the top is the Distress Ink. The bottom is the Distress Oxide. The Distress Oxide is, like I say, there's a little bit of shine to it, a chalkiness, if you will. It's really obvious on black. Let me see if I can find some black. Yes. Okay. Let's do the broken china. There we go. Yeah. See that? And let's do the broken china distress ink. And I think you'll see the difference. Let me wipe it off again. Get as much of the oxide off as possible. Okay, this is the, the distress ink. Oh yeah, see? Can you tell the difference? See how much bright that is, it just kind of pops out at you, the oxides, as opposed to the ink itself. You can barely see that on the black. Last but not least, I want to show you how these two inks work with a sentiment. I just grabbed my black stamp, handmade for you, and I'm going to be using both the Distress Ink Peacock Feathers as well as the same color and distress oxide. This is the distress ink. Not bad. Let's clean this real quick. My homemade stamp cleaner. All right. See how shiny it is? There. See the difference? More vibrant because it is a combination ink. It's a hybrid. And when it dries, it has that real, that little chalky look, that brilliant. And let me go ahead and stamp it on black in distress oxide. Oops. Yeah, it's hard to see, but it, it when it dries, it will pop out more. So let's add some water droplets to this. I think we'll get some small drops and see how that works. There we go. There, see the drops? Blot them up. It just gives a nice little pattern. It reacts with water. Okay, you can see you can see the handmade for you a little bit better. Okay. So here are my examples of the distress ink versus the distress oxide ink. You got value from this video please like and if you want to be notified about more videos that i'm going to be putting out in the future 
please press subscribe and that little bell for all. Thank you so much for joining me, and you all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.